via Facebook and YouTube. Glad to be together today. There are a few announcements I would highlight for you. This uh, is the third Sunday of the month, and we collect items for the Children's Hunger Project. Uh, so um, if you have forgotten to bring your items, and notice there are very specific items that is required for the Children's Hunger Project. If you have forgotten to bring those items and would like to do so, you may bring that by sometime tomorrow. And uh, Nancy, raise your hand, Nancy, will be glad to uh, collect those items a little bit later this week and take them uh, to the organization. So uh, you are okay if you forgot to bring those this morning. Uh, as you may have noticed, if you came in uh, from this way, there's a bake sale going on, and, and all of your diet plans are ruined. <laughs> uh, there are um, uh, actually everything in moderation, right? Um, there are some wonderful bake sale items that our children and youth are uh, selling for donations to their youth camp, uh, youth camps this summer. So I hope you will. Uh, give generously and uh, also take home some goodies. Uh, will you be doing that following the worship service too? I assume so. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, other announcements uh, are in your bulletin. Uh, you see prayer requests. Uh, Peter and Rosemary have indicated that they are well, and so we uh, are not specifically praying for these days, and Becky and Phil are well, uh, so um, th these are updates and follow-ups to prayer requests, so we can celebrate with each of them. Uh, I will, however, tell you that uh, Marlene, uh, who we prayed for last week, and uh, this week was admitted to hospice care, she has died. So we pray for her daughter and son-in-law, uh, and I will be happy to give, uh, have Linda send out information about those details when I have them. Uh, so prayer for uh, Heather and Jeff uh, and her death. And also you see in the bulletin David's sister, uh, Carolyn family, and um, she has also died. So prayers for David.
uh, right on the table um, <coughs> in the narthex if you are willing to read. Anyone who can read and project their voice a little bit um, is welcome to sign up for that. It is good experience for you, and I know that you will like it and we will appreciate it. So please sign up to be a lay reader for the worship services. Let us prepare our hearts and minds. Thank mm -hmm.
I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age, and had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At this set time, I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, Oh yes, you did laugh. The Lord dealt with Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had promised. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son who Sarah bore him. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Now Sarah said, God has brought laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. And she said, Who would ever have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age.
every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Just at the moment while I make a comment on that, if you're starting something brand new, start with the people you know. That's what I think is behind that message, because Jesus did eventually reach out. Uh, himself and his disciples to the Samaritans and to the Gentiles. Continue. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You receive without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, or two tunics, or sandals or a staff or labor. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that town or house. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that moment. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as servants and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in your synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and the Father is child, and children will rise against their parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all of my name, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next, for truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The grass withers and flower fades, but the word of our Lord, it stands forever. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. May I have the children please come forward and stand around the pond. <coughs> Thank you. 
you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior and rely solely upon his grace. Do you? Do you intend to be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? Do you? Let us pray. We give you thanks, O holy and gracious God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the water, and you created all that is, seen and unseen. By the gift of water you sustain all life. By the power of your spirit, bless this water, that it may be a fountain of deliverance and rebirth for all of us. Wash away the sins of all who are cleansed by it, Raise them to new life and wrap them to the body of Christ, we pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon them that they may have the power to do your will and continue forever in the presence of the risen Christ, to whom with the Father and the Holy Spirit be always glory and honor, now and forevermore. Amen. What is your Christian name? What is your first and middle name? Maki is your Christian name. And a couple of words. Baptism is the sign and seal of God's love and grace. We know that love and grace has already been here for you all this time. And yet this is the time that we acted out. It is a sign and a seal of Christ's love for you, and that sign and seal can never be. Baptism is not just an individual thing. Within our Presbyterian faith, it is a community activity. A community participates because a community promises to be family. Just as you are not complete without God's saving grace, we are not complete. We're not a complete family without it. As you look around on me, at these people, they get good look. <laughs> And the people in the choir, <laughs> notice that they are not perfect. Okay. I don't want to point out anything. <laughs> they are not perfect. We are human, that includes me. Uh, we are not perfect. We are human and we make mistakes. Please forgive us when we do and challenge us to be better followers. We have asked your husband, Bob, to stand up here with us in solidarity with you. Also, I have asked your deacon, Beverly, to be here as a symbol of your church family standing alongside you to help you, to encourage you, to teach you, to challenge you, to do mission with you, to show you Jesus. Baptism is the most, this may be surprising to you, baptism is the most radical thing that we do. Because in baptism, we proclaim that you don't belong even to your family. You belong solely and completely to God. It is a radical statement that you are God's child. And you have sole allegiance to God. And there is absolutely nothing, nothing that can ever separate you from God's love. Always and forever. Amen. Would you like to kneel? Okay. I'm going to come right behind you. Mom, child of the covenant, God's child, I baptize you in the name of the Father. The Son and the Holy Spirit. You are forever God's child, marked with the sign and a seal of God's love, now and forever. Amen. Amen. O Lord, uphold Maki by your Holy Spirit. Give her the spirit of wisdom and 
Christ's ministry, for we are all one in ministry in this place. Let us sing together, we're marching in the light of God.
more uh, quite as precarious about this, this kind of thing. So it was important to him. Hospitality can be described as generous and self-giving. Hospitality reaches out to others and puts their needs first. As a general rule, hospitality looks a little different in this country. Challenges to this kind of hospitality for us, I think, include gated living communities, fear and distrust of strangers, and sometimes just plain self-centeredness. And sometimes fear is rightly placed. We only invite people, generally, that we know to our home. We accept family members moving in with us for a short time, but that is about the extent of hospitality for many of us. Biblical hospitality is different. It is hospitality that throws caution to the wind and includes the risk of placing yourself in need while you take care of someone else. I've seen that demonstration hospitality by a few over the many years that I have been alive. And I marvel at the grace in which some of you do it so well. Abraham was paying attention to And he noticed some strangers who were journeying near his camp. He thought they could use some hospitality, so it says he rushed over to them and offered them welcome. Offered them cool water for drinking and washing up. And then he rushed to Sarah to have her make some bread cakes. Then he rushed to slaughter a cow and take it to his servant to prepare. And he rushed to set a table before them. He was in a hurry to be hospitable. And that leads to good conversation and eventually to God's holy and wonderful surprise. God is portrayed as one of the three men in this story. So Abraham and Sarah end up providing, imagine this, hospitality to God. God asked Abraham and Sarah a poignant question. And it's a poignant question for us to ponder as well. He asks, is there anything too difficult, too wonderful, too hard for the Lord to accomplish. Do you trust me? Do you not remember that I told you I was going to make you parents of a great nation? Am I to be trusted to accomplish what I promise? What do you think is too much for me? It is a piercing question that God asks Abraham and Sarah. And it's a question that we should pay attention to today. So what is Abraham and Sarah's holy and wonderful surprise? Is it a baby on the way? Well, I'm sure, but it's more also. It's also that God is not finished with Abraham and Sarah yet. That God will fulfill God's promise. That nothing is too wonderful for the Lord. Even when the chips are down and when all hope is lost, even when we take matters into our own hands, God accomplishes more than what we could ever ask or imagine. Surprise! You do not have the last word. God does. And God's good surprise leads to joy, laughter, dancing, and hope. My friend Chuck encourages us to not take offense at Sarah's laughter. <clears throat> Many times we have to 
Was it in looking around on a Sunday morning and finally realizing, well, these people are okay. They, in fact, love me. And I love them. I'm grateful to be part of their family. Where have you been startled? Was it the realization after a year of tithing, which means giving 10% of your income? Oh, my goodness, that's a lot. Was it the realization after a year of tithing that you finally worked up to that you could have been doing this all along? That God gives you the strength and the ability to do what God asks? Did that surprise you? Has it been a Bible study that inspires you and helps you be accountable? Where have you been surprised by God lately? And if you've not been startled or surprised by God, then I would submit you're not paying attention. Take your cue from Abraham. God works in and through amazing and sometimes rather mundane things. And if we're not paying attention with a posture of expectation and surprise, well, if we're not paying attention, we can miss it. Our gospel text for us today has a whole different kind of surprise for us in mind. We hear in the text that people around the disciples are harassed helpless and in need of compassionate care. I'm sure that was no surprise to the disciples in Jesus' day because all they had to do was look around to see it. It's also no surprise to us today because all we have to do is look, see the news, and we see harassed, helpless people as well. But what is surprising is Jesus' words that these harassed and helpless people Without a shepherd, well, they're not all going to like us. They're not all going to like the disciples' message and words of hope. In fact, Jesus says they will arrest, flog, and even pay them when they minister in his name. But don't worry, he said. Don't get distracted or worried about what you will say because the Spirit will be with you help you and tell you what to say. Provide love, compassion, and hospitality to them, but move on when they do not accept you. Do not give up and keep at it, Jesus says. Well, I don't know about you, but I can do without that kind of surprise. Okay? How about you? Can you do without that kind of surprise, too? Yes. There are wolves in amongst the sheep to watch out for, Jesus says. Boy, I would have loved to have not, not heard this text today. Ted Wardlaw, the president or former president of Austin Theological Seminary, says something interesting about the connection of the church to the wolves being in amongst the sheep. He said, you know, the church is not much to look at. He's not talking about architecture. We as a people, church, that's who the church is. The people, the church is not much to look at. We're often polarized and battled and timid in the face of the wolves of our time. And poor law invites reflection on what those wolves might look like. It's not physical and actual wolves, right? His words of caution to us in this day and time, post-pandemic, and continued civic unrest at times. His words of caution is that there is the alerting temptation in our environment to long for and seek a risk-free world. Wouldn't that be nice? Or at least an enclave, a shelter, um, assurance and comfort. Wouldn't it be nice to stay there all the time? He would say that God's work, however, is never risk. Spirit gives us with the words to say, and God gives us the grace to display grace to others. But there is no guarantee that our message and intentions will be heard in the way that we intend. We must still be willing to go and follow where the Spirit leads. Luke Powery, a famous preacher says it's always surprising to find a wolf where it is least expected. But it does not change the mission. We're 
were still called to hospitality, to be sent into a broken and fearful world to tell others of the holy surprise of Jesus Christ. For there is nothing too wonderful for the Lord to accomplish. Too hard for the Lord to accomplish. Even with us timid, sometimes unfaithful, sometimes fearful people. God can accomplish surprising things if we just choose to be part of it. Let us do so. Amen. Will you please stand? Confess the faith of our baptism. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended. Father Almighty, from this he shall come to judge.
holy God, all that we have and all that we are already belongs to you. Please help us to realize and accept that. And please use these gifts, your tithes, to accomplish your will and purpose. This we pray in your holy name. Amen. You may be seated.
are able 